Good day everyone, I am Mark Eddie De La Cruz, together with my partner Mr. Mark Kevin Dublau, and we are going to report different levels of identity. I am going to discuss our topic first by asking what is identity. Identity refers to how people answer the question, who are you? This question may be posed explicitly or implicitly, at a personal or a collective level to others or to oneself. The schools of thought within the identity literature tend to emphasize either personal or social contents and either personal or social processes. However, I argue here that identities are inescapably both personal and social in their content and in the process by which they are formed, maintained, and changed over time. The personal and social nature of identity gives the construct its greatest theoretical potential, namely to provide insight into the relationship between the individual and society. However, Doing justice to this potential requires integrating perspectives on identity and some processes from social and personality psychology, developmental psychology, cultural, critical and discursive psychology, and beyond. In this chapter, I outline some key parameters for such an integrative understanding of identity. I examine the extensive and interconnected nature of identity content and then consider the confluence of sociocultural, relational, the individual processes by which identities are formed, maintained, and changed over time. It is followed by professional identity. Professional identity is the identification with the profession exhibited by an aligning of roles, responsibilities, values, and ethical standards as accepted by the profession. Identities are formed on many levels, micro, meso, macro, and global. Let's start with the micro level. The micro level is self-definition, relations with people and issues as seen from a person or individual perspective. The meso level is where our identities are viewed, formed, and questioned by our immediate communities and or our families. Macros are the connections among and between individuals, issues, and groups as a view from a national perspective. Lastly, the global level is connections among and between individuals, issues, and groups from a worldwide perspective. Identity is often described as finite and consisting of separate and distinct parts like family, cultural, personal, professional, and etc. Yet, according to Parker Palmer, it is an ever-evolving core where our genetics or biology, culture, loved ones, those we cared for, people who have harmed us, and people we have harmed, the deeds done to self and others, either good or ill, experiences lived, and choices made come together to form who we are at this moment. Let's proceed to the theories of identity. Many theories of development have aspects of identity formation included in them. Two theories in particular directly address the process of identity formation in their theories. Eric Erikson's theory of psychosocial development, specifically the identity versus role confusion stage, and James Marshall's identity status theory. Let's talk about Eric Erikson first. Erikson's belief is that throughout each person's lifetime, they experience different crises or conflicts. Each of the conflicts arises at a certain point in life and must be successfully resolved for progression to the next of the eight stages. The particular stage relevant to identity formation takes place during adolescence called identity versus role confusion. The identity versus role confusion stage consists of adolescents trying to figure out who they are in order to form a basic identity that they will build on throughout their life, especially concerning social and occupational identities. They face the complexities of determining one's own identity. Erickson said, This crisis is resolved with identity achievement, the point at which an individual has extensively considered various goals and values, accepting some and rejecting others, and understands who they are as a unique person. Once an adolescent has attained identity achievement, they are ready to enter the next stage of Erickson's theory, which is intimacy versus isolation, where they will form strong friendships and a sense of companionship with others. If the identity versus role confusion crisis is not positively resolved, an adolescent will face confusion about future plans, particularly their roles in adulthood. Failure to form one's own identity leads to failure to form a shared identity with others, which could lead to instability in many areas as an adult. The identity formation stage of Eric Erickson's theory 
of psychosocial development is a crucial stage in life. Let's move to James Marshall. James Marshall created a structural interview designed to classify adolescents into one of four statuses of identity. The identity statuses are used to describe and pinpoint the progression of an adolescent's identity formation process. In James Marshall's theory, the operational definition of identity is whether an individual has explored various alternatives and made firm commitments to an occupation, religion, sexual orientation, and a set of political values. These are the four identity statuses in James Marsh's theory. Number one, identity diffusion, also known as strong confusion. This is the opposite of identity achievement. The individual has not yet resolved their identity crisis, failing to commit to any goals or values and establish future life direction. In adolescence, this stage is characterized by disorganized thinking, procrastination, and avoidance of issues and actions. Number two is identity for closure. This occurs when teenagers accept traditional values and cultural norms rather than determining their own values. In other words, the person conforms to an identity without exploration as to what really suits them best. For instance, teenagers might follow the values and roles of their parents or cultural norms. They might also foreclose on a negative identity, the direct opposite of their parents' values or cultural norms. Number three is identity moratorium. This postpones identity achievement by providing temporary shelter. This status provides opportunities for exploration, either in breadth or in depth. Examples of moratoria common in American society include college or the military. And last is identity achievement. This status is attained when the person has solved the identity issues by making commitment to goals, beliefs, and values after extensive exploration of different areas. Let's move on to the seven forms of identity. First, we have self-identity. Self-concept or self-identity is the beliefs and ideas one has about them. The self-concept is different from self-consciousness, which is an awareness of oneself. Components of the self-concept include physical, psychological, and social attributes which can be influenced by the individual's attitudes, habits, beliefs, and ideas. These components and attributes cannot be condensed to the general concepts of self-image or self-esteem. Multiple types of identity come together within one person. This can be broken down into the following. Second is cultural identity. Cultural identity is the identity of a group or culture or of an individual as far as they are influenced by their belonging to a group or culture. Cultural identity relates to, but not synonymous with identity politics. There are modern questions of culture that are transferred into questions of identity. Historical culture also influences individual identity. And as with modern cultural identity, individuals may pick and choose aspects of cultural identity while rejecting or disowning other associated ideas. It is followed by professional identity. Professional identity is the identification with the profession exhibited by an aligning of roles, responsibilities, values, and ethical standards as accepted by the profession. Ethnic and national identity. An ethnic identity is the identification with a certain ethnicity, usually on the basis of a presumed common genealogy or ancestry. Recognition by others as a distinct ethnic group is often a contributing factor in developing this band of identification. Ethnic groups are also often united by common cultural, behavioral, linguistic, ritualistic, or religious traits. Processes that result in the emergence of such identification are summarized as ethnogenesis. Various cultural studies and social theory investigate the question of cultural and ethnic identities. Cultural identity remarks upon place, gender, race, history, nationality, sexual orientation, religious beliefs, and ethnicity. National identity is an ethical and philosophical concept whereby all humans are divided into groups called nations. Members of a nation share a common identity and usually a common origin in the sense of ancestry, parentage, or descent. For the continuation of our report, I, Mark Kevin Dumlau, will be reporting different types of identity. Religious identity is the set of beliefs and practices generally held by an individual 
involving adherence to codified beliefs and rituals and study of ancestral or cultural traditions, writings, history and mythology, as well as faith and mystic experience. The term religious identity refers to the personal practices related to communal faith and to rituals and communication stemming from such conviction. This identity formation begins with association in the parents' religious contacts. An individuation requires that the person chooses to the same or different religious identity than that of their parents. Gender identity in sociology describes the gender with which a person identifies, whether one perceives oneself to be a man, a woman, outside of the gender binary, etc., but can also be used to refer to the gender that other people attribute to the individual on the basis of what they know from general role indications such as social behavior, clothing, and hairstyle. Gender identity may be affected by a variety of social structures, including the person's ethnic group, employment status, religion or irreligion, and family. And last, the disability identity refers to the particular disabilities with which an individual identifies. This may be something as obvious as a paraplegic person identifying as such, or something less prominent such as deaf person regarding them as part of the local, national, or global community of deaf people culture. Disability identity is almost always determined by the particular disabilities that an individual is born with. However, it may change later in life if an individual later becomes disabled or when an individual later discovers a previously overlooked disability particularly applicable to mental disorders. In some rare cases, it may be influenced by exposure to disabled people as with DIID. Now, for the influences of identity, we have five types. Number one is cognitive influences. Cognitive development influences identity formation. When adolescents are able to think abstractly and reason logically, they have an easier time exploring and contemplating possible identities. When an adolescent has advanced cognitive development and maturity, they tend to resolve identity issues more so than age mates that are less cognitively developed. When identity issues are solved quicker and better, there is more time and effort put into developing that identity. Having a solid identity earlier is a preferred situation and is one of the first steps in forming the desired life and goals of an individual. Scholastic influences Adolescents that have a post-secondary education tend to make more concrete goals and stable occupational commitments. So going to college or university can influence identity formation in a productive way. Of course, the opposite can also be true where identity influences education and academics. The two can influence each other, ultimately forming an identity in the process. Education's effect on identity can be beneficial for the individual's identity. The individual will be getting educated on different approaches and paths take in the process of identity formation. Ultimately, scholastics are important for our brains as well as our identities. Sociocultural influences are those of broader social and historical context. For example, in the past, adolescents would likely just adopt the job, religious beliefs, and etc. that was expected of them or that were the same as their parents. In a society like today's, adolescents have more resources to explore identity choices as well as more options for commitments. This influence is becoming less significant due to the growing acceptance of identity options that were once less accepted. Also, more of the identity options from the past are becoming unrecognized and less popular today. The changing socio-cultural situation is forcing individuals to develop a unique identity based on their own aspirations. Socio-cultural influences are playing a different role in identity formation now than they have in the past. However, it still affects identity, just in a different way. Parenting influences the type of relationship that adolescents have with their parents has a significant role in identity formation. For example, when there is a solid and positive relationship between parent and adolescent, they are more likely to feel freedom in exploring identity options for themselves. 
study found that for boys and girls, identity formation is positively influenced by parental involvement, specifically in the areas of support, social monitoring, and school monitoring. In contrast, when the relationship is not as close and the adolescent fears rejection from the parent, they are more likely to feel less confident in forming a separate identity from their parents. These are just examples. Of course, there are other outcomes possible in adolescent identity formation when examining the parenting as well as the parent-child relationship. Cyber socializing and the internet. It is becoming an extension of the expressive dimension to the youth condition. There, youth talk about their lives and concerns design the content that they make available to others, and assess others' reaction to it in the form of optimized and electronically mediated social approval. When connected, you speak of their daily routines and lives. With each post, image or video they upload, they have the possibility of asking themselves who they are and to try out profiles differing from those they assume in the real world. They thus negotiate their identity and create a sense of belonging, putting the acceptance and censure of others to the test, an essential mark of the process of identity construction. That is all our report. We hope you have learned many things from us. Thank you and God bless.